Hi, good morning, and hi, good morning, and welcome to today's products in focus. Very volatile starts the morning with most global equity markets down significantly, only to bounce back quite strongly this morning. You'll see that more most prevalently on the UK 100. Um, if I have a look at the US 30 just to kick start things off, you can see that 17,546 was potential support that remained intact, and we've reversed all the way back up to 17,738, which is a potential broken support now. Expect attack as potential resistance. Um, as uh, the Iranian global uh, Iranian nuclear deal looks to have stalled, uh, they're still actually negotiating just now. So uh, crude's not really doing a huge amount, but we'll come back to that in a second. But certainly, many global equity markets coming down. Um, still issues over Greece, uh, slow down in China. Uh, PMI came out last night, a little bit worse than expected, but the uh, Chinese market certainly seemed to have bucked a trend because they've taken that weak PMI number as an excuse to think about further stimulus in that region. Um, but nevertheless, most other global equity markets are looking a little bit tired right now. This could be a head and shoulders formation right here, uh, where you've got a, a, a the kind of shoulder and neck and then of another shoulder. We certainly seem to be entering a kind of a wave formation, but already this morning to see such a strong rebound is quite interesting. <laughs> so looking at the UK 100, for this is even more prevalent, you can see it hit 66.86 as potential support, and uh, we've got 67.71 as being potential resistance. Just briefly there, while we're talking there, hit a positive territory. Looking like we might have death cross in the moving averages at some point in the next couple of sessions, whereas all the other all the other technicals relative neutral sands the MACD that's just a bit across the zero line. So there certainly would be a little bit of pressure on there. Very interesting candle formation to have, and this is how it finishes later on today. Obviously, it's only really just started, but um, a, a lot of volatility first thing this morning. That's all already like a, a 90 point range right there. So moving on to Japan 25. It came off relatively harshly um, yesterday, down again today, trading below that 21 period SMA. With dollar yen now trading below 120, uh, typically when the Japan 225 comes off, people start buying the yen as a safe haven to hedge. And um, that's exactly what's happened there today as the dollar again is also very volatile. Had a good day uh, yesterday, a little bit of a weaker day today. So moving on to uh, dollar yen to look at that in more detail. Uh, this is a bit of a tough FX pair to trade just now. Um, albeit it is trading in a narrowing range, uh, it did look like we were in the middle of some sort of uptrend right here only for it to break mid-March and we're on the wrong side of that level just now. So 119 still seems to be the potential support and that also coincides with the 55 period at SMA so that's nothing to be aware of. That's more. That's that's when dollar yen gets a little bit more interesting again. So having a quick look at West Texas crude, uh, drifting lower, uh, obviously any Iranian deal if that does happen uh, even though you won't see a big influx of um, of crude from Iran right away, that would definitely weigh on prices. If there is no deal reached, that would be very positive for crude prices. Um, but we are drifting right now with $43.30 being a potential support. Now, if we have a look at gold, it has continued to fall, bouncing off the 21 period SMA, positive today as the US dollar um, is firmly in retreat with 1186 being that potential support level uh, to be aware of. Moving on to Euro dollar to finish things up. Euro dollar on the wrong side of one spot, 0786, uh, as that Greek as that Greek worry, Greek fear, um, begins to creep in against the common currency. Um, we are now trading below the 21 period SMA as well. The other technicals look relatively neutral. So if we stay comfortably below 107.86, then 102 doesn't seem like a massive stretch, especially if Greece fails to push forward with any of the reforms they've promised for their next tranche of aid. They run out of money mid-April. So finishing up with GBP USD, uh, one spot 48.13 seems to be the significant pivot level. Doji formation yesterday showing indecision uh, and Today's probably going to be no different, albeit there there seems to be more pressure on the set on the selling side than there is on the buying side just now, uh, as indicative by these long-legged candles all the way down. So uh, macro data-wise, we mentioned uh, well, actually says here that the uh, the PMI uh, MBS came in slightly better than expected, but the actual final figure this was slightly lower than what was expected. Anything below 50 is a contraction, uh, so that's why uh, the Chinese markets are taking that as a positive sign for further stimulus in the future. So I think their uh, the China E50 was maybe up about one and a half percent earlier on today. And if you look at um, more PMI data for market uh, due at um, 
five to five to nine and nine a.m. and the eurozone nine thirty at UK time. So if you're trading cable or euro dollar again, these figures will be quite important. And then if you finish up there, you can see towards one fifteen today, you've got ADP private payrolls could be a precursor to Friday's non-farm payrolls. Remember that figure is actually due, even though it is the Good Friday weekend. Um, and then you've got US uh, PMI data and finishing up with crude oil inventories and domestic oil and sales if that's your bag. But certainly make sure you've got your um, recurring alerts set for all these ones in the afternoon. ADP private payrolls will certainly be closely looked at. Uh, so your dollar and cable will be popular uh, today. So keep your eye on the chart for making sense party later going forward and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.